Hi, this is Dr. Skip Hilgard with Stress Intervention Services, Professional Life Coaching and Christian Counseling Ministry. I would like to welcome you to lesson number six in Freedom from Addiction, titled, Having a Plan for Victory. In lesson number six, we're going to understand and learn about restoration and wellness. We're going to help you overcome your addiction by learning how to apply God's Word, which leads to total restoration and wellness. You have a memory verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 57. The Apostle Paul wrote this, But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there is victory in Jesus. In 1937, there was a fellow by the name of Eugene Bartlett that wrote a very famous hymn titled, Victory in Jesus. Listen to some of the beautiful words. I heard an old story. How a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, that I repented of my sin and won the victory. And then the course, I love the course. O oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere and I knew him. He loved me ere and I knew him. And all of my love is due him. Yes, my friend, there is victory in Jesus. And so today, we're going to learn. Step number one in this plan for victory is to make a decision right now. If you have not made this decision to follow Jesus, I want you to determine in your heart right now, from this day forward, I am going to do all I can to follow my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember the old song, wherever he leads, I'll go. Well, Jesus Christ will lead you down the path of victory, victory over your addiction, victory over sin. So the very first thing is this, decide, decide, make that decision to repent of your sin. And if you've not asked Christ into your heart, ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior right now. You remember what the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means you, you can call on him right now. Repent of your sin and take Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Now repent means to turn from your sin and dedicate yourself to one's new amendment. And your new amendment is not sin, but it's an amendment. And it is a dedication to follow God in this life down the paths of righteousness. Repentance is to turn away from our sin, turn away from our addiction, and turn to God. You know, my friend, honestly, nothing changes until something changes. You know, if you want change and you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, what's the old saying? That's insanity. But if you want something to change, then you have to make changes. So here is something I want you to consider. Ask God right now to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And my friend, he will. Take the opportunity and ask and, and turn to 1 John 1, 9 and read the words of the Bible where there's a promise if we confess our sin to him. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin, and here it is, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you see, the decision is this, to accept Christ as your Savior, and then to determine in your heart to follow him no matter where he leads you. Now step number two, we're going to actually get down to making a plan. We're going to talk about strategizing, something you may have never done before, but I promise you, if you will take the opportunity and listen carefully and learn how to develop a plan for victory right now, it will help you in the days to come. You know, I've learned this in life. Every day is not a good day. There are some days when uh, I feel on top of the world, and there are some days when the world, it feels like it's on top of me. You understand what I'm talking about. And when we're struggling with an addiction, one thing that happens uh, Things around us change, and sometimes they change in a negative direction. And it causes us to, to have trauma or fear or stress or anxiety. And then that's a trigger that causes us to want to go back and perhaps use, perhaps drink, just to kind of numb the situation that we're experiencing. But having a plan, something that you can turn to when you start feeling rough, when you start feeling heavily tempted, 
when you start saying, you know, this is a bad day and man, a drink or a hit uh, would sure make things better. You can turn to this plan that you strategized and begin to go methodically through this and say, you know, this is step one, what I need to do, step two, what I need to do, and start following that plan that will lead you down that path of victory. So we're going to talk about that victory plan right now. And there's some items that you're going to need. First thing is a three ring binder and some notebook paper and a pen. Now I like using something like this, which is just a little ledger. Uh, there are pages on here that are blank like this. And then of course, all through here I have written and I have my devotion and strategy time uh, that I record in this book right here. So if you have something like this, works great. But you need something that you can add pages to if you need to. So a good folder or three ring binder would work great. Or maybe you just need something like this. The next thing is a good Bible. Now I like devotional Bibles. I like study Bibles. And the reason why sometimes I need some help understanding a passage even after all the years of ministry and all the years of teaching and preaching, I can still get bogged down. You know, and, and I need just a little freshness, a little insight. A good study Bible will help you with that. So find you one, one that you enjoy reading and read it and practice what's in it. And then the next thing you need maybe is a devotional book. Now there are a lot of great devotional books out there. And a devotional book is inspirational. It could be a biography of somebody. Uh, it could be uh, about somebody's life that, that motivates you. And, and spend time reading that devotional book every day. So those are the three things that you're going to need in order to begin this victory plan. Now here's the next step, step three in your slide. We're going to learn how to make a wellness report. And what a wellness report is, is basically how am I doing? Especially if there is a crisis at hand. I want to begin to evaluate, self-evaluate myself. Where am I at in this crisis? What am I going to need? How am I going to respond without using and without drinking? What is my plan? So the very first thing is a wellness plan. So in your binder or in your, your little book, you're going to turn and you're going to open up a blank page and at the very top, write the date. For instance, June 15th, 2020. And I also like to write the time, 8.30 a.m. in the morning then there are three things that are going to be involved in this wellness record. Three entries on this page. First of all, what does it feel like to be free from the addiction? Secondly, how is my self-confidence level? And I want you to answer these questions on your wellness report. How do I feel at this time? Yes, I'm going through a crisis, but where's my confidence right now? My confidence in myself, my confidence in God. My confidence in, in how I am moving forward with the plans of my life. How am I doing right now? And then the next thing is, am I motivated right now to stay clean? Am I motivated right now to avoid drinking? Three things that will help you create a feeling of wellness and wholeness and freedom in your life. Number one, reading the Bible. After all these years of ministry, almost 40, I still each day spend time in the Bible. Now, when I read the Bible, I read it in a way that, it, that I need to read it. And let me explain how I read it. I'll read a psalm every day, a proverb every day. I'll go over to the New Testament and read two or three uh, chapters. And I'll write down times in my little devotion book what God is saying to me in those verses. Listening to good music. I love music. And, and I love instrumental music that doesn't have words. Soothing music. Listening to Christian music can help you with the wellness and the feeling of freedom and accomplishment. Eating good, well-balanced meals three times a day. That can help you. Why? Because a good diet and exercise is important to your wellness and your recovery. Now step number four in your book again, once again, you're going to write down recognize triggers. You're going to work through and understand and know the triggers that tend to lead you to the craving or the desire to use drugs or alcohol. Some of the most common triggers are these. Stress, exposure to people or places that serve as a reminder of drug use and alcohol use. Being around others uh, who are using. 
relationship struggles. You know, when we have those struggles in our relationships, we really can get down. But I often realize this, if I'm having trouble in relationships, I'm probably having some trouble in my relationship with the Lord. I need to get with Him and say, God, search me. Point out in my life those things I need to change that my relationship with you would be closer, more intimate. And what I have learned in life, when I do that, it trickles down in the rest of my relationships. Memories of stress and trauma can trigger emotions such as feelings of depression and anxiety. So I want you to know your triggers. Step number four, determine and record warning signs. They're out there. When you begin to experience anxiety and depression and, and it, it's lasting, it goes on for a day or two or three or a week, you got to realize that that is a warning sign. Irritability, forgetfulness, negativity. And then we begin to isolate ourselves from others. We just don't want to be around nobody, especially those in our support group or maybe even our church family. Now, step five. This is what we need to know how to do. We need to know how to manage ourselves in the midst of a crisis. For instance, in your book, in your three-ring binder, who do I need to contact? What do I need to do in the means or the midst of a crisis? Reach out to my support group or groups. Which health care provider should I contact? What treatments are available right now for me? Do I need counseling or do I need inpatient treatment? What treatment facilities do I need to contact? What individual needs do I have in the middle of this crisis? And then step number six. You know, we can plan, but if we don't imp implement the plan, that is put the plan into practice, it's of no good. It's just like a, in probably the building that you're in right now. Somewhere near the door is what we call a fire exit plan. Now that plan has been provided for you that are in the class, the participants, the people in the building, to show you the safest and best way to exit the building in case of a fire. That's been well thought out, well planned, and it's been placed in a designated area. And God forbid there ever be anything uh, in your building like a fire that you would have to utilize that plan, but it's there. And it's there to pay attention to and there to follow in the midst of a crisis. The same with your strategy and plan for victory. Once you realize that you can go to this plan that you're going to develop, you can look at this plan very carefully and you can say, you know, this is what I need to do in able to, to be able to exit this situation without relapse. So let's implement the plan. And when you implement the plan, think about people you consider as supportive friends, family members, people that know you, that can help you with the implementation of the plan. Develop your victory plan in a great way for individuals to know that this is what I have prepared for my life in case of an emergency or in case of a crisis, in the place when I get down, when I have a bad day. With your victory plan, you will be able to establish goals and enact processes that can counter the triggers that are there on bad days. You must plan your path and you must have that path that leads to safety, to victory, freedom from addiction. And then step number seven, always vitally important. Any kind of storm that we're in, the storm can scare us. If you're out in the boat like the disciples were one time and they were on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus was on the shore this particular time, a great storm came and the waves began to beat up against the boat. The water began to get it in the boat. The boat started to sink. And you remember this is the time when Peter stepped out of the boat because he saw Jesus coming to him walking on the water. That's right. And Jesus said, step out of the boat, and he did start walking. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus and not the waves, he was okay. But the waves are real, and they splash up against our life. Sometimes they hurt. They can cause great fear and anxiety and deep concern in our life. Are we going to make it this time? Is this going to be the time I'm going to fall in so deep I can't ever get out? 
please learn to keep focused on Jesus. And even if you lose your focus, just like Peter did, he started to sink and he just said, Lord, help me. What a beautiful prayer. What a simple prayer. Help me. But I'll tell you what, it's directed to the right one. Lord, help me. And God will help us when we begin to fear and sink in the midst of our storms of life. There are three common mistakes that lead to defeat. Number one, your victory plan is just not written down. You don't have it. You're not paying attention to the importance of this lesson, learning how to strategize, learning how to plan for a crisis for your life. Second thing, magnifying your fears more than you do the power of God. Third, we're weak spiritually, maybe even weak physically and mentally. Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things will be added unto you. Now there's a principle right there that Jesus laid out. Seek God first in all things. In other words, keep your focus on him. There's a verse of scripture in Philippians 3, 15 through 17. It's out of the, the MSG translation. It says, so keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now we're on the right track. Let us stay on it. Stick with me, friends. Keep on the track of those you see running the same course, headed for the same goal. Keep your eyes on the victory. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, the last slides, uh, we have examples of what a wellness uh, report looks like. So take the opportunity to view those. It has been a pleasure and a blessing uh, to teach this class today. Look forward to seeing you the next time. God bless you. Have a great day.